It's the end of the world as we know it. I feel fine. Good morning, slaves, and welcome to another edition of It's the End of the World as We Know It, and I Feel Fine. The show where the future looks fucking bleak. Donald Trump is likely going to be the Republican nominee for president. It's Trump all the way. I think he may be the next president of the United States. Howard S. Are you serious? Apologies for freedom. I can't handle this. I am your host, Stimulator, and for weeks now, Paris, the so-called city of love, has been transformed into the city of motherfucking rage. Ever since the terrorist attacks that rocked France's capital last November, the whole fucking country has been under a state of emergency. After its chinless president François Hollande dredged up an old law drafted in 1955 as part of France's dirty counterinsurgency war in Algeria. This emergency law, which places limits on protests and grants additional powers to the state's security forces, was extended for a second time on February 16th and will now be in place until at least May 26. It's a real challenge to see when we will come out of this stage of emergency. When do we stop it and how? So far, the French state has mainly used its expanded powers to harass and further alienate the nation's large Muslim population. Mosques and halal restaurants have been targeted, thousands of warrantless raids have been carried out, and hundreds of peeps have been placed under strict house arrest without trial. I was woken up by noisy pounding and shootings at the door. My daughter was hit in the neck, probably by some shotgun pellets. Tension against this atmosphere of generalized repression has been steadily building for months, and multiple flashpoints across the country have since begun to converge into a generalized movement of anti-capitalist and anti-state resistance. Not surprisingly, one of these flashpoints is Lazad the sprawling land defense occupation that for years now has been actively opposing the construction of the planned Notre Dame de Land airport. Back in January, a court handed down a ruling upholding the state seizure of several farmhouses on the occupation site and the eviction of their residents. All moved by the court's decision, residents of Lasad have vowed to defend their encampment from any future attacks and have called on their allies for solidarity and support. On February 20th, militants in the nearby city of Nantes answered this call, taken to the streets to denounce the extension of the state of emergency and to express their solidarity with the intransigent residents of Lazad. During the demonstration, paint bombs and other projectiles were lobbed at police lines, and peeps took the opportunity to redecorate a number of banks and high-end shops. Another flashpoint has been the Calais jungle, the infamous refugee camp home to thousands of migrants trapped in France on their way to the UK. The demolition and forced eviction of the southern section of the camp began on February 29th, sparking resistance from camp residents, including a hunger strike launched on March 2nd by a dozen Iranian refugees, several of whom sewed their mouths shut. This hunger strike concluded on March 25th, after the French government backed off from plans to demolish the northern section of the jungle. But suffice to say, tensions are still fucking high. So. Within this context of simmering social unrest, on March 9th, in an amazing display of chutzpah, the French government decided to introduce a harsh labor reform bill, the so-called El Comri law, which seeks to eliminate the country's sacrosanct 35-hour workweek cap, which most French workers view as a hard-won achievement earned through decades of militant class struggle. For many peeps in France, this was the last fucking straw. And the response has been a resounding fuck you. Unions have launched a series of coordinated strikes and taken to the streets across the country, where they have been joined by tens of thousands of striking high school and university students. At a massive demonstration on March 17th, crowds of pissed off youth clashed with the French popo in the streets of Paris lobbing rocks and flares and attacking police vans. One week later, the country was rocked by an even rowdier series of protests as the piss-licking capitalists of the so-called Parti Socialiste met again to try to introduce a slightly revised version of the law. In Paris, black-clad hooligans rained a hail of bottles down on the militarized swine of the French popo. Several undercovers were unceremoniously ejected from the crowd and several cars were burnt to a crispy crisp. Later that day, after footage of the pigs assaulting a high school student went viral, youth responded by smashing up two fucking cop shops 
and looting two grocery stores, seizing food and redistributing it to peeps on the streets. Free taco. Free taco? This latest wave of protests culminated on Thursday, March 31st, in a nationwide general motherfucking strike. 266 different protests took place, with a reported 1.3 million peeps participating nationwide. Marches were held in every major city in the country, many of which led to street fighting with the police. In Paris, over 30,000 peeps participated in a demonstration that quickly descended into violent attacks on the motherfucking pigs. Check this shit out. Real change requires real action. I'm no hero, just a citizen who decided to get up and do something. I've done my part, now it's your turn. At the time of writing, shit in Paris is still popping the fuck off, and given the intractable nature of the multiple issues fueling the current wave of unrest, it's a fair guess that things won't be calming down anytime soon. Bravo France, bra fucking vo.